What if the reason stubborn belly fat refuses to budge has nothing to do with willpower, meal plans, or even how many calories you eat, but instead comes down to a single moment most people never think about? For years, we've been told that fat loss is just math. Calories in versus calories out. Eat less, move more, and everything should work itself out. But if that were true, far more people would be lean by now. Modern metabolic science is quietly exposing a flaw in that belief, and once you see it, you can't unsee it. Your body is not a calculator. It is a rhythmic, time-driven biological system, designed to follow patterns that existed long before gyms, meal tracking apps, or late-night snacks. And when those patterns are ignored, the body doesn't rebel loudly. It adapts. It slows fat burning. It protects stored energy, especially around the abdomen, without asking your permission. Here's the part most people miss. Fat loss doesn't fail during the day. It fails at night. It fails in a narrow window when your hormones decide whether your body will spend the next several hours repairing, burning, and resetting, or storing and defending what it already has. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly what that window is, why one small habit shuts it down completely, and how aligning with your body's internal clock can change the way fat loss feels without adding more effort to your day. If you've ever felt frustrated watching the scale stall or your waistline stay the same despite doing everything right, there's something important you need to hear. This isn't a discipline problem. It's not because you're lazy, inconsistent, or lacking motivation. Your body isn't broken, and it isn't working against you. It's doing exactly what it was designed to do. The human body evolved to survive in a world ruled by light and darkness, activity and rest. Long before food was available 24 hours a day, your metabolism learned to anticipate when energy would come in and when it wouldn't. When those expectations are met, the system runs smoothly. When they're ignored, the body quietly shifts into protection mode. Fat burning slows, storage becomes the priority and it happens automatically, without conscious control. This is why simply eating clean or cutting calories often stops working after a while. Your metabolism doesn't just respond to food, it responds to timing, and when food keeps arriving late into the evening, your internal clock never gets the signal to switch modes. The problem isn't that you're eating too much, it's that your body never gets a true break. That shift begins at a moment so ordinary that it's easy to overlook. It happens when you finish your last meal of the day, not when you fall asleep, not when you wake up, but when your body finally receives the signal that food has stopped coming in. This isn't about a magic hour or a rigid rule. It's about giving your metabolism enough quiet time to change gears. When eating ends earlier in the evening, digestion gets a head start on finishing its work. Blood sugar rises, insulin does its job, and then critically, it gets the chance to step back. That window between your final bite and bedtime is where direction is decided. If food keeps arriving late, the system stays busy. If it doesn't, something very different begins to unfold. This doesn't mean everyone must stop eating at the exact same clock time. Bodies are individual. Schedules vary. What matters is creating a consistent buffer, several uninterrupted hours where your body isn't processing new energy. That buffer is the handshake between your habits and your hormones. And once it's in place, the rest of the night stops working against you and starts working quietly in your favor. Once that final meal is behind you, your body enters a short but important transition phase. For the next few hours, digestion is still active. Glucose moves through your bloodstream, and insulin steps in to guide that energy into your cells. This is normal. This is healthy. The problem isn't insulin itself, it's how long it's forced to stay on duty. Insulin has a second role most people never hear about. It's a storage hormone. While it's elevated, fat burning is effectively paused. Your body won't tap into stored energy while new energy is still being processed. So if food keeps coming in late snacks, desserts, even healthy nighttime bites that pause stretches on, fat burning stays locked, sometimes well past midnight, but when eating ends earlier, insulin finally gets to clock out, blood sugar clears, the system quiets down. This is the moment the body switches from consumption mode to maintenance mode. It's subtle, 
almost unnoticeable, but metabolically, it's huge. While most people are unknowingly extending this phase with late-night eating, your body is preparing for something entirely different. Because as insulin falls, another signal begins to rise. And that signal doesn't just affect sleep. It determines how your body handles energy for the rest of the night. As the night deepens, another hormone quietly enters the picture. Around the time the lights dim and the day winds down, your brain begins releasing melatonin. Most people know melatonin as the sleep hormone, but that's only part of the story. Melatonin also reshapes how your metabolism behaves after dark. Here's the key detail almost no one talks about. Melatonin and insulin were never meant to operate at the same time. From an evolutionary standpoint, eating was designed to happen during daylight, while nighttime was reserved for rest, repair, and conservation. So, when melatonin rises, it sends a clear message to the body, slow things down. Insulin sensitivity naturally drops. Your system becomes far less efficient at handling incoming sugar. This is where late-night eating quietly backfires. When food shows up during this window, insulin has to work against the grain. It moves slower, blood sugar lingers longer, inflammation rises just enough to matter. And, eventually, that excess energy is routed to the easiest storage location, the deep abdominal fat your body prefers to protect. But when eating ends earlier, this hormonal clash never happens. By the time melatonin is high, insulin is already low. The body isn't confused, it isn't stressed, it's aligned. And in that state, the night stops being a metabolic liability and starts becoming a powerful advantage. By the time midnight arrives, something important has changed. You haven't eaten for several hours. Insulin has settled back to its baseline. The signal to store energy is gone. And for the first time since dinner, your body is free to access what it's been holding on to. This is the moment most people never reach. Not because they can't, but because late-night eating quietly delays it night after night. When insulin stays low long enough, the door to your fat reserves finally opens. And your body doesn't reach for just any fat. It targets visceral fat first. This is the deep fat packed around your organs, the kind most strongly linked to insulin resistance, heart disease, and metabolic dysfunction. It's dangerous, but it's also highly active. Your body is eager to use it when conditions are right. Without incoming glucose from the stomach, your liver shifts gears. It begins converting stored fat into usable energy producing ketones that keep your brain, heart, and lungs running smoothly through the night. This is your internal furnace turning on. While you're asleep, your body is quietly fueling itself from the very tissue most people struggle to lose. But this process is fragile. A single late-night snack can shut it down completely. If insulin rises again, the door closes. The furnace never lights, and the opportunity passes until the next night. Between roughly 2 in the morning and the early hours before sunrise, the body enters a state most people never experience consistently. Insulin is low. Digestion is quiet. The nervous system has finally downshifted. This is when fat oxidation becomes remarkably efficient. Not because of effort, but because nothing is getting in the way. During this window, your body isn't distracted by incoming food or competing signals. It's focused on maintenance, repair, energy balance. Stored fat becomes the primary fuel source, especially the fat that's easiest to mobilize. This is why people who align with this rhythm often notice changes in their midsection before anywhere else. The body goes where the metabolic leverage is highest. It's important to understand what makes this window possible. It's not just stopping food early. It's the combination of earlier eating, adequate sleep, and a calm night environment. When stress is lower and light exposure is reduced, the hormonal signals line up naturally. Nothing needs to be forced. Most fat loss plans fail because they ignore this phase entirely. They focus on willpower during the day and overlook what happens when the body is finally left alone at night. This window isn't about doing more. It's about not interrupting what your biology is already prepared to do. As this overnight window continues, Another powerful signal rises quietly in the background. Human growth hormone, or HGH, 
begins to increase. Most people associate HGH with youth or muscle growth, but its real importance shows up here. HGH is a preservation hormone. It tells your body what to protect and what to use for fuel. When insulin is low, HGH sends a clear instruction. Don't burn muscle. Don't break down vital tissue. Use stored fat instead. This is why short, overnight fasting windows created simply by eating earlier are so effective. They allow HGH to do what it was designed to do. Repair tissue, strengthen bone, support skin integrity, and guide energy use toward fat rather than lean mass. This is also why the morning can feel different after nights like this. People often wake up feeling slightly tighter, lighter, or more defined. That sensation isn't dehydration, it's remodeling. Your body spent hours reallocating resources, clearing out inefficiencies, and reinforcing what matters most. Nothing extreme happened. No calories were slashed, no workouts were added. Your body simply had enough uninterrupted time to finish the work it's been trying to do all along. By the time morning arrives, your body is in a very different state than it would be after a late night of eating. You've gone 12 or more hours without food, yet something surprising happens. You're not panicked with hunger. That shaky, urgent need to eat just isn't there. This is because your hunger hormones respond to rhythm, not chaos. When your body knows food reliably stops at night and resumes in the morning, ghrelin, the hormone that drives hunger, stabilizes. Your system trusts that energy is available because it's been using stored fat all night. There's no emergency signal, no metabolic alarm. At the same time, insulin sensitivity is at its peak. When you do eat, your body is ready. Nutrients are absorbed efficiently. Blood sugar is handled smoothly. You're no longer fighting your metabolism, you're cooperating with it. Even processes like cellular cleanup and repair have had time to run, clearing out the leftovers from the day before. The result isn't just better fat loss, it's a sense of calm control that carries into the rest of the day. Making this work doesn't require perfection, discipline challenges, or radical changes. It works best when it feels almost boring. If you notice mental hunger creeping in later at night, start with something simple. A cup of caffeine-free herbal tea can go a long way. The warmth mimics the sensation of eating and helps settle the nervous system without triggering insulin. Light matters more than most people realize. Bright overhead lights late at night send the wrong signal to your brain. Dimming the lights after the evening hours supports melatonin release and helps your body transition naturally into its repair phase. You're not forcing fat loss, you're removing friction. And if stopping earlier feels hard at first, don't rush it. Shift gradually. Move dinner back by 30 minutes for a few nights, then another 30. Your body adapts faster than your mind expects. Consistency matters more than hitting an exact time. This isn't about restriction. It's about creating enough quiet for your biology to finish its work. Once that rhythm is established, everything else starts to feel easier.